In this video, let us discuss MCQs on network analysis. If you are preparing for competitive exams, this video will be very much helpful. In the seventh question, we have to calculate the values of I1. So let me take this node as Vx and let me take this node principal node to be at ground. We know that a current source in series with the resistor, that resistor can be treated as a short circuit. So applying nodal analysis over here, what I'll be getting is applying nodal analysis at Vx, I'll be getting minus 2 plus Vx divided by 2 plus Vx divided by the resistance is 1 plus 2 which is 3 which is equals to 0. So on taking LCM, I'll be getting minus 6 times of 2, it is 12 plus 3Vx plus Vx which is equals to 0. So I'll be getting 5 times of Vx which is equals to 12 then Vx equals to 12 divided by 5 volts. Vx equals to 12 divided by 5 volts. What is the value of current is my question. Current equals to Vx divided by 2. That is 12 divided by 5 times of 2 which is 6 by 5 which is 1.2 amperes which is 1.2 amperes or 6 by 5 amperes hence option number B is correct. Let me solve 38th question. Directly you can solve it. The question is based on star to delta and delta to star. So we are having a delta connected network and delta connected network. Let me convert this one to a star network. So what I'll be getting is I'll be having one resistor and one more resistor and one more resistor. This resistance is 1 ohm and this resistance is 2 ohms. Let me calculate the equivalent resistance that is Rxy. What is this resistance value? We know that when all the impedances are equal in the case of delta network, if you want to convert into a star network, it is divided by 3. It is divided by 3. So I'll be getting 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm. So Rxy which is equals to 1 ohm plus nothing but series, series with 2 ohms the equivalent of 1 and 1 is 2, the equivalent of 1 and 2 is 3. So 2 and 3 are in parallel, which is equals to 1 plus 6 divided by 5, which is equals to 11 by 6 ohms. Sorry, which is equals to 11 by 5 ohms. Hence, option number C is correct. 39th question, we have to find the value of Vx. So in order to find the value of Vx, the voltage drop across this 50 ohm is Vx. So I can treat this voltage as Vx and this one to be ground. So applying nodal at nodal analysis at Vx. So what I'll be getting is minus 1.6 plus Vx divided by 100 plus what is this current 0 0.02 times of Vx plus Vx divided by 50 which is equals to 0. So let me take an LCM. I'll be getting minus 160 plus Vx plus 2 times of Vx plus 2 times of Vx which is equals to 0 which is 5 times of Vx which is equals to 160 straight away I can tell Vx equals to 160 divided by 3 which is equals to 32 volts. So I'll be getting Vx equals to 32 volts. So I've solved this question based on Thevenin's theorem also. So I have to calculate the Thevenin's voltage across this I'll be getting 160 by 3. Last question. What they are asking is we have to calculate the values of I1 and I2. So this current, this current is, this current is I1 minus I2 because I1 is downward current and I2 is the upward current. The effective current is flowing downwards. So let me consider this node to be Vx. Let me make use of KVL. So applying KVL for the loop I1. So what is the current? I'll be getting 15 minus 4 times of I1 plus 2 times of Ix. 2 times of Ix plus what is this current? This current is Ix minus 6 times of Ix which is equals to 0 because it is plus 2 minus minus 2 plus and this one is plus 2 minus. I have taken assumption that minus 2 plus if I am moving then I am treating it as positive nothing but voltage rise plus 2 minus if I am treating it is voltage drop I will be considered as negative. Whatever the convention you want you can follow. So what I will be getting is 15 minus 4 times of I1 minus 4 times of Ix which is equals to 0. But what is the value of Ix is my question. Ix equals to I1 minus I2. So what I will be getting is 15 minus 4 times of I1 minus 4 times of what is the value of Ix? It is I1 minus I2 which is equals to 0. 
So I'll sending all these terms on the right side, I'll be getting 8 times of I1 minus 4 times of I2, which is equal to 15. Call it as equation 1. Call it as equation 1. Let me apply KVL for the loop I2. What I'll be getting is minus 6 times of I2 minus I1 minus 2 times of I2 minus 18, which is equal to 0. Because here it is plus 2 minus plus 2 minus plus 2 minus. Right? So 6 times of I2 minus 2 times of I2 will be minus 8 times of I2 plus 6 times of I1, which is equal to 18. So on rearranging, I'll be getting 6 times of I1 minus 8 times of I2, which is equal to 18. Call it as equation 2. So let me make use of simultaneous equation in order to simplify this I1 and I2. So I'll be getting 8 times of I1 minus 4 times of I2, which is equal to 15. The second equation is minus 6 times of I1 minus 8 times of I2, which is equal to 18. So let me multiply this equation by 6 and this row by 8. What I'll be getting is 48 times of I1 minus 24 times of I2 which is equal to 90 and 8 6 are 48 48 times of I1 minus 8 8 are 64 64 times of I2 which is equal to 144 which is equal to 144 this entire term I can cancel and uh, this value is so changing sign I can cancel so this is plus and this one is minus so I'll be getting 40 times of I2 which is equals to 54 so I'll be getting I2 equals to minus 1.35 amperes. I'll be getting I2 equals to minus 1.35 amperes. And what is the value of I1? Let me make use of first equation. That is 8I1, which is equals to 4I2 minus 15. So what is the value of I2? I2 equals to minus 1.35. On substituting, I'll be getting I1 equals to 1.2 amperes. That is option D is going to follow. That is thank you for being on my channel. Please like the video, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel Training Yarn. All the best for your competitive exams. Thank you.